Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss seven SQL functions that are going to save you hours of time that you might be spending writing SQL queries. These functions were introduced in SQL Server 2022 and can help simplify a variety of complex tasks like generating a series of data to finding the greatest or least of multiple columns to working with dates or handling nulls in Windows functions. Two new functions introduced in SQL Server 2022 are the greatest and least functions. They can help you find the maximum or minimum of multiple columns. For example, let's say we have the quarter 1, quarter 2, quarter 3 and quarter 4 data for two categories, hot drinks and cold drinks. We want to find the maximum sales in any of the quarters and the minimum sales in any of the quarters. We can simply use the greatest and least functions, pass the column names as arguments for these functions and we will get the desired results. The second useful function is the generate series function. Now this is very helpful as we'll see now. We just need to define the start and the end values for the range that we need to generate and pass them as arguments to the generate series function. Here we have passed the start value of 1 and the end value of 1 and running this query is going to generate a series from 1 to 10. This can be used to solve more complex problems like generating a series of date values. Here we have defined a start date. We can just use the date add function add the value generated by the generate series function to our start date and generate as many date values as we need. Since the first value generated by the generate series function is 1 in this case, our range starts from 2nd of January. If we want it to start from the same date, we can start a series from 0. We can also pass an additional argument specifying the steps in which we want to generate the series values. So let's say we pass a value of 2, then the range will be generated with a step interval of 2. Another very important function that has got an additional feature in SQL Server 2022 is the string split function. Normally a string split function just splits the string based on the delimiter. So if we run this query, we get the four values which were separated by comma as a delimiter. But what if out of these delimited values, we only wanted the second instance of the value? Now this can be achieved by using a third argument to the string split function called the ordinal. To enable that argument, you need to pass a value of one as a third argument. And now you have a value that specifies the sequence in which these delimited strings occurred. So now if we want only the second instance, we can simply add a filter on this ordinal value and put it as two. Let's run this example on a database table. Let's assume we have a table called products with different values as tags. Now, if we just want to extract the second value in this delimited string, then we can use the ordinal property and filter on ordinal is equal to two. If you execute this query, you will get the second value where it exists and null if it does not exist. The next two functions that we are going to discuss are date functions. Now dates are always tricky to handle in SQL code and may require multiple and complex lines of code to handle them correctly. But these two functions introduced in SQL Server 2022 make handling dates a little bit easier. For example, the date trunk function is able to extract multiple parts of the date from your date value. One interesting use is to be able to find out the start day of the week for a particular date using the date trunk function and passing week as the argument. So executing this query is going to give me 15th of September 2024, which is a Sunday and based on my date first setting is considered to be the first day for this week. Now this could have been quite complicated if we did not use this function. Similarly, we can find out the start date of the quarter, which is the 1st of July for September the first day for the month, the first day for the year, and the ISO week start, which took Monday as the first day of the week. As you can already imagine, this function is very handy. Another function that can be used similarly is the date bucket function. Now the primary use of this function is to create intervals of time ranges, and we will see in our next example how that can be useful to us. But before that, if you pass any date part argument, and one and execute this query on that date, it works similarly to extract the first day of the week, which it takes to be a Monday. If you pass the argument day, it's going to give you the same day without the time part. The R is going to extract the R 
from the date time value. The minute argument is going to extract the minute part as well. And the seconds argument is going to extract all the date value till the seconds. Now, how do we use it to extract the time intervals? Let's say we have a table sales orders and it has the order IDs and the order dates, which are separated by a few seconds. Let's say our requirement is to find all the orders the, or the count of orders that were placed within each three minute range. So now we are going to generate an interval of three minutes using the date bucket function. We have passed the argument minute three because that is the interval that we want for three minutes and it should be based on the order date column. The next thing we need is a count. And we are going to drop by this three minute interval that we created using the date bucket function. Execute this query and you will see how many orders were placed within each three minute interval. And this is the start time for that interval. The next two features that we are going to discuss are related to the Windows function. Now, Windows functions are very helpful in solving a variety of complex problems. But sometimes we have to deal with nulls while writing our Windows functions. Let's assume we have a table called currency rate. You can see the end of day rate for each day. But for some days, the values are not available and we see null values for those particular days. Now, let's say we decide to handle the null values by assigning the previous day's value if for the current day, the value is null. So in that case, for this particular record, we are going to assign the value of 0.9996 to as the end of day rate for this particular date. But what happens if the previous day also has a null value? In that case, we want to assign the previous value, the previous not null value. Now, this is a very complex scenario called the last not nulls puzzle, which can be solved by writing multiple lines of code and complex SQL logic. But this new function, this new feature introduced in SQL Server for Windows functions makes writing this code very easy. Now let's say we use the lag function to find the previous day's value. So I'm going to run this query. It is going to give me two columns, end of day rate. So you can see the end of day rate and the new rate, which is the previous day's rate. So now we can apply a case statement. So this will be a conditional statement saying if the current day's value is available, then use the current day's value. Otherwise, use the previous day's value. Now, there's another trick to writing this case statement in a very short way, and we can use the coalesce function for that. So the coalesce function is going to pick up the first not null value, and we are going to pass it the value of the current column, that is end of day rate, and the column that we generated by using the lag function. So whichever is the first not null value, it is going to pick up that value in case the end of day rate is available. That is the first not null value and it's going to retain that. But if it is not available, then it is going to take the lag value. Now, if I execute this query, you will see that for this record, we got the correct value as the previous day's value. But these two records had the previous value, previous records value as nulls as well and therefore they were not able to get a valid value. Now the trick here is to just add a clause ignore nulls which is a new clause introduced in SQL Server 2022 for Windows functions and execute this query. So what's going to happen is it is going to ignore all the previous null values and it is going to go till it finds a not null value. So I'm going to execute this and now you will see that for every record, every null record, it has obtained whatever was the previous not null value. And the last feature that we're going to discuss now is surely going to save you some time in defining your Windows frame. Let's say we have a table called employee and we want to find out the first hired and the last hired employee within each department based on the hire date. To achieve this, we are going to use the first value and the last value functions and define a Windows frame by partitioning on department ID and ordering by hire date. Now, since we are using two different Windows functions over here, but they're using the same Windows frame, SQL Server 2022 came up with a feature where we can define an alias for this Windows frame. So we simply need to add this particular statement after the from clause where we define the alias for the window frame and we define the frame here within the brackets. Now, instead of defining or 
writing or calling this frame again and again, we can just call it by the alias. So we can remove this part over here and just replace it with our window frame alias. And execute this query. Hope you found the video useful. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will see you in the next video.